there's some holes that can tie people up that makes it tricky, but the more your face can be out there, the more people can read your face, that's like where you make your money and that's where you tell your story. So like when you guys locked up, your heads were down and they were also close, like almost like you guys were too tight on each other and you can almost hit heads that way, you know what I mean? So that's one thing I noticed when you guys locked up the first time that you guys were real close and your heads were down and they were tight. So, you know, once again, not picking on you guys, just, just the observation I made. God, Undertaker is one of the greatest guys I've ever seen in the business. I mean, and when he told me like, yeah, still, I watch stuff every day and pick up little things and learn. I mean, you never stop learning in the business as far as it goes, but there's layers upon layers you can keep putting on things to try and make this more realistic as, po you know, as realistic as possible can be. How much it hurts or how bad it is, it's only as bad as we let them believe. You know, if someone has a headlock on you, you know, you shoot them down, you grab your head, that they've almost, you know, squeezed your brain out as you're doing it while you're kind of meeting into them, you know, before you get tackled, you know, that, that works, you know, stay true to that. Yeah! 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 Huh? Huh? you lock up, whenever you do grab the headlock, like, you, I see this a lot, especially on shows now, like the newer guys, you know, they have a headlock and it's down like this. Like, once again, how I said, you know, why, you need to see their face, make sure their head's up here. You know what I mean? Just so you can see their face. You know, the Shaker told me, uh, which I, I, I listened to him and learned a, a lot from him, was just saying how cruel the business this was. Because I remember, like, Jeff's still really talented. He's like an anomaly as far as staying healthy. It's crazy how healthy he stayed considering what he does. But when we could do a whole lot of stuff and we were young and athletic, like, we had no idea where, like, where to place it or where to do it or when we should have. And, and a lot of other guys have it in the business. It's not until you kind of get old and beat up and you get hurt and injured and you kind of have to learn to work around these things or you have to learn to work smarter and more efficiently where you learn like lessons. Oh! We just started. We just locked oh! up and you just put me headlock. Oh. At the beginning of the match, a kick out should be like that. You know what I mean? Like I'll see guys that'll get pinned down and it's just like a tackle. You know what I mean? Like at, at the end, if you've taken 10 bumps, you know, and you've been taking a pile driver, I mean, that's where it's one, two, kick out. I mean, if someone kicks out, you know, at almost three right from the beginning, then where do you go from there? You know, Kane or whatever, you know, don't be afraid to be a chicken shit if you're ill mm -hmm. because it's, it's cool to let them know, you know? And then even if you'd back to the corner, whatever it might have been, and as he kind of gave you a clean break, being a baby face, you know, if you push him, push back or something, you charge like you're in him, and he drew back, you know, like, whoa, whoa, ooh, ooh. To suggest to maybe is to try and figure out a way to maybe have him shining on you and maybe hit his arm like or stop him and throw him into the pole you know what I mean something was a little more healing you guys think it's hard to communicate I wanted to take more time to talk about it but that didn't work out okay no, it's, it's all right I mean, everybody's here to learn um, what, what do you think were your mistakes in there matches are two of my favorite matches of all time. You were Randy Savage and then uh, you were Ric Flair and the one from, uh, I don't remember if it was Clash of Champions or Russell War, but they had, they had a, a series of matches. And uh, I said, well, which one's your personal favorite? He said, well, I mean, I really like them both, but I'll say this, like Macho Man came up and like had like virtually the whole match, like 90% of it like written down and, you know, set and like, oh, this is what I want to do. It's going to be great. One time Jeff was going to swan time and he was covering them and he swan time us both and Kane choke slams. I mean, I just kept feeding them in, you know, like if you have tools at ringside with you, like use them, utilize them, you know, like if you, you know, have a valet out or a manager and they're just sitting there and they don't, they're not utilized at all, then why are they really there? You know what I mean? Because like this is, you know, once again, this is entertainment. We control the crowd and try to make it look as realistic and believable as possible. But if you have other tools or, or toys to utilize, like, like try, and, try and use them. But you'll you know, get so frustrated because you're either hurt uh, or because you have to drive so far or, like, the shows are shitty or, you know, whatever it might be. But if you don't love this, like, you know, 
I don't, I don't think you'll stay in this business. You'll end up, you'll, you'll end up leaving. Would you agree with that? You know what I mean? Anything we did past that was like extra credit to both of us. We just want to be the tag team champs. But then we worked with them on the road. Like we lost them at the next pay per view, so we worked with them for like four weeks. So we were like working with them on the road like four days a week, and they beat the fuck out of us every night. <laughs> and like after two weeks of that, and they're both. I mean, Ron Simmons, you know, was a Heisman Trophy winner and just a badass. And you know, Bradshaw was a big tough guy. You know, like after two weeks, I told you, I was like, I can't take this. I said, they can fucking have these belts. Like, our name's in the book. <laughs> I don't mean, I they can have, seriously, they can have them. And then, like, by the third week, I was just like, I was, just, I was like, man, fuck these motherfuckers. I told you, I said, the next time this fucking guy hits me, I'm going to fucking try and knock him out. I'll just get my ass beat. Just like, all right, fuck it. And, like, we're in there, and Bradshaw was just landing in the corner, and he caught me with one. And then I remember the ref pushing back as he came in. I hit him in the jaw, and he, like, buckled down to a knee. And the next time he hit me, it was just it's easy to get me. And it was, uh, you know, it was, and it was just really like just seeing if you would fight back, you know what I mean? All you can do, man, is just try and make it, you know, try and make it a lifestyle. Keep pushing boards, you know, just try and always get better.